Southwestern Advantage, where you can learn, where you can go. Southwestern Advantage, come and learn with me. <laughs> when you call me silly, it just gets me laughing. <laughs> <sighs> okay, okay. Hmm. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hopefully you're having a great day today. A wonderful day. Uh, if you guys just had some food, let me know in the comments. Um, my favorite sweet would probably be crumble cookies. Yeah, I love some good old crumble. <laughs> mm, I wish I had some more crumble right now. Like, oh, they have heavenly cookies. So, so good, you guys. Um, that's actually my favorite sweet. Like, my <laughs> number one favorite sweet. Hopefully, you guys have had crumble cookies because like i cannot stop saying that they are so good because they are <laughs> um if you've never tried crumble cookies go to their place and try their cookies <laughs> and uh come back to this video after you tried some uh, crumble cookies not right now not right now do not leave the video <laughs> um but once you have some crumble cookies come to this video let me know which cookie you had and if you would rate it, uh, I don't know, something out of a million, <laughs> from one to a million, what would you rate it? Okay, speaking of food yumminess, <laughs> um, we are talking about the digestive system in my Southwestern Advantage book. <laughs> so we're going to be figuring out what our wonderful bodies are doing when we eat. So uh, let's flip to this page. Ooh. Ah, there it is. The digestive system. The digestive system breaks down food into simple substances that the cells can use. <laughs> That's interesting. It then absorbs these substances into the bloodstream and eliminates any leftover waste matter. Hmm, <laughs> that's really cool. The main part of the digestive system is a long tube called the alimentary canal. This tube consists of two main sections. The first section is with, <laughs> the first section has the mouth, esophagus, and stomach. Second one has the small intestine and the large intestine. Nice. Other parts of the digestive system include the gallbladder, liver, pancreas, salivary glands, and teeth. The salivary glands produce saliva for you. It gives you tons of saliva when you when your mouth waters or when you or when you eat something really sour. Ooh, sour. <laughs> uh. The mouth esophagus, and stomach. Food digestion begins in the mouth. Food is crushed by the teeth and mixed with saliva. Yes, you're right. Enzymes secreted by the salivary glands immediately begin to break down carbohydrates into simple sugars. <laughs> That's really cool. The swallowed food moves from the pharynx into the esophagus and onto the stomach. <laughs> That's interesting. In the stomach, millions of tiny glands manufacture about three quarts or 2.8 liters of gastric juice a day, including hydrochloric acid and the enzymes pepsin and renin. Food remains in the stomach for about two to five hours and is changed into a semi-fluid called chyme. Hmm. Stomach muscle contractions and digestive juices readily digest carbohydrates and convert them into the blood sugar, sugar glucose. It takes more time for proteins to be digested and even longer for fats. Hmm. I didn't know that. That's actually really cool. Ulcers. A peptic ulcer is a break in the mucous membrane of the esophagus, stomach, or duodenum. A large percentage of ulcers are caused by a, by a bacteria. 
H. pylori, which can disrupt the mucus layer, thus inflaming tissue lining. Specific medications and pain relievers such as ibuprofen and aspirin can also cause, cause ulcers. Ulcers can cause pain, nausea, fatigue, weight loss, and bleeding. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> not even 1% good. How does that work? Food digestion. Digestion is the process of breaking down food into smaller particles that can pass through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream. The particles are distributed to nourish all parts of the body. In the digestive tract, food is squeezed or pushed by muscles. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that. Food is dissolved by digestive juices and enzymes. Juices and enzymes act as catalysts, producing chemical changes in food but not becoming part of the chemical produced. <laughs> That's crazy. That's so crazy. The liver. The liver is the largest gland in the body. <laughs> wow. It weighs about 4 pounds or 1.8 kilograms and acts as an important chemical plant. There's, <laughs> there's a plant in your body. That's really, really cool. I've always wondered. Among its many functions, the liver manufactures bile, numerous enzymes, and blood proteins. It stores fat products and makes them available as fuel. It neutralizes some of the poisons entering the bloodstream, and it processes iron for the blood system. It also delivers glycogen to the body tissues on demand, providing needed fuel or energy to carry out their many activities. <laughs> That's interesting. It's good for your brain. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up, because I love, I love learning. This book gives me tons of knowledge. Knowledge is... Knowledge is just so good. But the main thing is, knowledge is power. <laughs> the small intestine and the large intestine. After it leaves the stomach, the chyme enters the du duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. The small intestine is a coiled tube about 6 meters or 18 feet long. Do you guys know how many meters is in a foot? Three meters. It's nice. Also very interesting because I always I always think it's two, but it's three. Like how come I'm always so close? <laughs> In the small intestine, more digestive juices are added to the chyme. Fluids from the pancreas and bile from the liver help to further digest the chyme. Bile does not contain any enzymes but its salts aid in the physical digestion of fats. Pancreatic juices contain a number of enzymes that act on a variety of foods. Proteins are broken down into amino acids. Complex sugar molecules are broken down into simple sugars. Fats are reduced to fatty acids prior to absorption into the blood or lymph vessels. Hmm, those are really interesting facts. Absorbing food particles. Projecting from the inner lining of the small intestine are thousands of microscopic finger-like projections called villi. These absorb the broken down food particles, conveying them into the bloodstream for distribution to the rest of the body. By the time food has traveled from the mouth along what can be thought of as a conveyor belt in a chemical refinery to the end of the small intestine, the process of digestion has been completed. All that remains of ingested food are water and waste products, which pass into the large intestine, where much of the water is absorbed. In the meantime, food products are transported by blood vessels from the walls of the small intestine to the liver. 
The digestive system consists of a flexible mucus lined muscular tube from 7 to 11 meters or 20 to 36 feet long, beginning at the mouth and ending at the anus. Okay. You guys, that was so much fun learning and reading from this Southwestern Advantage science book. There's like, there's unlimited, there's unlimited knowledge in these books. Like, look how thick that is. That's a lot of knowledge in that book. And there's still tons more to learn about our human body and the wonderful things it does for us. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this video. For all my a fans, you know who you are. Love you guys. And for all my new fans, hit that like and subscribe button. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Ooh. There's tons of new content. Um, there's some older videos back there stashed. I'll show you guys that too. You guys, have a great rest of your day. If it's evening, have a great rest of your evening. Remember, go to www.swadvantage, but you should also remember, also always remember, knowledge is power. <laughs> and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!